This is the story of how Minecraft's neighbors are insane. Always check on your neighbors, always check on what they're doing because this one is gonna blow your minds. So this Minecraft world is one that I'd been in for quite some time. Now I just recently died, which is why I had no levels on my health bar, but that is besides the point. You see, when I came across this village, one that I previously died in before because a random identity attacked me, I wasn't sure that this story was gonna be the one that developed. Now of course, as you guys can all see, this village was already a little bit strange because the outer lookings of this village contained white concrete. I mean, what kind of material is built like that? And the strangest thing ever is that too many houses were built in unison, meaning that they were lined up too organized in a, just, just, just a completely strange and organized fashion. Now, of course, to the untrained eye, this might seem completely normal, but to someone, an eagle-eyed expert like myself, I knew that I was in for some trouble the moment I walked back into this once untamed village. Even the well was strange as it was made out of stone bricks. Everything was just a very, very odd, odd experience. Even the girl, I mean, the skin seemed to remind me of something, but I couldn't for the life of me remember where I'd seen it before. So I didn't pay attention to it as much as I should have. And that was my first mistake, not paying attention to the very small details. You see this? was no ordinary girl, and I was going to see that that was the case. So she sported red hair with a white shirt and some pink shorts, and additionally, she said something strange is going on. Now at first, I didn't really know what she meant, but I knew that with my expertise, we could definitely get to the bottom of what she thought the problem was, because I knew that this village was designed in a strange way. Now she said, my neighbor keeps disappearing, and that was the only information she gave me. I mean, this isn't enough information to warrant something strange, but then she gave me some additional information. She said that at night when we were all home, so this meant that she was disappearing when everyone else was sleeping. So she said that she disappears, and this gave me the question, where did she go and what did she do? So that was quite confusing because I needed to know all the details, very strange, very strange indeed. So I decided that as once I got every single piece of information out of this young girl, that I would continue my investigation on this village and make sure that this was at the top of the list. She also mentioned that she didn't know where she goes exactly. And that wasn't good because if someone does go somewhere out in the night, it's always good to know where they are so that you can provide any details and make sure they aren't up to any strange activity or potentially bad activity. Now from the moment I saw her neighbor, I knew instantly that there was definitely something going on because her clothes revealed that whatever activity she might be dealing in is clearly something that probably wasn't going to be shown to others that she wanted to. So I hatched a pretty foolproof plan. My plan was pretty simple. All I needed to do was get some cameras place them outside and then see exactly where she heads off to. I mean, it's easy to spy and sneak on someone, but let's be honest, every now and again, we fall asleep, we get tired, we might even see things that aren't really there. So I decided to place these cameras outside. Now, of course, these are pretty big cameras and they aren't exactly hidden. So I wasn't sure if this was gonna work, but at the same time, it is worth a shot to place down these cameras because if they do give us any kind of insight into what exactly is going on, then it's worth the shot. Now I decided against placing just one. Because if I placed just one camera, then that would mean that there was only one angle and I could possibly miss the big shot. So I decided to place as many cameras as I possibly could around this person's house. Now of course when she comes outside at night, she might think it's strange and destroy them, but that's a risk I was willing to take. The only unfortunate thing is that I didn't have any smaller cameras and these could only be placed in very public places. So this wasn't exactly good as they took up around three blocks in size, which was pretty crazy. So I decided to continue my adventures and simply wait until nightfall until I figured out exactly what was going on. So once the cameras were placed, I decided also that I would hide myself because cameras are going to fail. But my eyes, even after a terrible night's sleep, might just do me justice. So I decided to continue on and hide with my friend. So the cameras were set up, everything was recording, and all we had to do now was wait. Now the waiting game is something nobody likes to play, but if you're hellbent on making sure you find out the exact goal, you've gotta wait until nighttime, until things start to get strange. 
So this was where one of the first clues started to appear because it was nighttime and I knew that this is exactly when things start to go in a strange direction because she'd already told me that this is exactly when things go weirdly. So I decided that it would be best if I could figure out exactly what was going on. So what was strange about this entire thing was that once I actually came out of the house, the video cameras were gone. Now, I know that might come as a surprise to you Oh, well, not might come as a surprise to you, but it definitely came as a surprise to me. I mean, I thought that, yeah, maybe she's going to destroy one of the two cameras or maybe even an ingenious strategy that I would do myself, just dig down. But that's not what happened at all. As you can all see, the cameras just were completely destroyed. I didn't even see them floating along the ground. I didn't even know where they went. They simply disappeared. It was truly, truly strange. And I couldn't really figure out exactly what was going on. So I decided to make sure that I could figure out what was going on and I couldn't I couldn't for the life of me at the time my mind was racing I was thinking where did she go how did I mess up and then I noticed this right here I was truly scared but I figured out exactly what was going on there was some kind of testing one two one two testing wanting so of course as you guys could see down here was truly insane because not that I couldn't find anything but there wasn't anything that said, yes, it's me. I'm doing something absolutely crazy and insane. I mean, all we really found when we went down there was a baking table, an alchemy table, and a few random books. I mean, that's not enough information to say that this person is up to no good. Now, of course, I know that things can be hidden behind secret walls and secret things, but I still believed in my heart that maybe, just maybe, there was a glimmer of hope. So I decided to go back upstairs and figure out exactly what was going on because I knew that there was definitely more to the story. So of course, I thought to myself, what would be the best scenario in my head? So I thought, what would I do if I was sneakily up to stuff? Of course, I wouldn't run back to here. And of course, I wouldn't run back to the village. I decided that it would be best if I ran to wherever the village wasn't. So if I ran in the opposite direction, maybe I would find out exactly what was going on and that is exactly what would happen. You see, my genius strategy was that if she was truly trying to hide something, it wouldn't be near the village or under her house. That would be far too risky. And luck of the draw, there she was. As you can all see, that was truly scary. I don't know what she was doing. At first, I didn't really know what she was doing, but eventually I did manage to find out exactly what she was up to. It was definitely scary once I figured it out. But of course, as I said, at the end of the day, this was the whole point of the story. So you guys can see that right here, I decided to hide in a tree. And I figured out the tree was definitely a best place to go because, of course, the most effective strategy. Now, of course, you can see me fighting her and it was a battle that I was never going to lose. I mean, I had 10 golden apples and I'd already used one and I don't think she was even expecting me to be there. The next thing was this monstrous beast. It stood around four blocks tall and with every hit, I felt the thunderous blow of the Black Beast. I don't know what triggered this beast to simply attack me, but maybe because I killed its friend, or maybe just because it was purely evil. Either way, I don't know, but it was kind of reminiscent of an old mob that I used to play with, and that mob was Beast Bendy. Now, of course, I decided that fighting it on its own terms wasn't the best, because, of course, it knew itself better than it knew me. So I decided to recoup and once again re-attack. I used my iron sword, snuck it from behind, and with around three or four clean hits, I managed to take the beast down with maximum efficiency. Now, this wasn't easy by any means, although I made it look very easy. This entire plan was devised by me. But it just goes to show that no matter what you think about the Minecraft world and what you think you know, it's clear that there's always something extra lurking in the shadows.